Hi there! Today we're gonna dive into some technical details of how aerodynamics of single-seaters work on example of F1000 and what is my personal story of this little aero research. Here I would like to make a little disclaimer. While I like math and coding, I'm not an engineer. I don't have any special education in aerodynamics or car designing, so everything you will see here is not a professional research, but it is based on some real math and pretty serious sources. First of all, how it all started for me. Last year, when I first got into F1000 single-seater, I was pretty confused by all this aero and wing settings, because I never had experience with aero before, and in F1000 we have at least three settings related to aero. Let me show you. Front lower wing is, let's say, almost static, front upper flaps have several positions, and then you can adjust back lower wing with a range, and back upper wing has several predetermined positions as well. Plus, there are a couple of more things you can play with if you go deeper into some shady details. Let me remind you of some basic concepts. First of all, more aero means more corner speed and at the same time less speed on the straight due to increased air resistance and air drag. So, if we increase angle of attack of the wing, we'll have more downforce and more corner speed, but more air resistance and less straight speed, and vice versa. Another important concept is that uh, if we add more air on the front wing of the car, it means that we will have more oversteer, so car is more subject to spin, let's say. But if we add more air on the back of the car, it will be more understeer, so the car is more subject to resist turning momentum, it's more difficult to turn it. This is very important when we speak from the driver's perspective, because it is very narrow balance between turning and stability of the car. But for me this knowledge wasn't very helpful, because you know concepts are good of course, but I still didn't know what to adjust exactly and how much exactly. The only way to find out was to start experimenting, actually. What I did. On some testing day at Alton Park last year, I decided to try to go for less downforce setup, but I didn't want to change balance of the car too much, so I went one position down on front wing and one down on the back. And it ended like this. It might look like understeer, but actually it felt like the opposite, the oversteer. Car became light on the back and I preferred to go straight rather than spin. So it made me think why it happened. I changed both wings by the same one step, but balance changed pretty noticeably. Well, the answer is obvious. Front flaps and upper back wing have different area and other properties. These steps are not the same in degrees exactly. So basically when you change them accordingly, you don't know how your balance will change. So I started thinking, what can I do about it? What can I change? Because I can't change these slots. They are predetermined by car design and regulations. But good news is that I can change lower wing angle much more precisely because it has thread. But how much exactly? But you know, there are surprises all around. I have pretty good library of racing related books and some of them, not many though, I haven't read yet. Uh, so I looked through and found this. Uh, race car aerodynamics designing for speed by Joseph Katz. Uh, when I bought it a couple of years ago, I thought it's too complicated. It doesn't give me a lot practical wise, but in current situation, it was a true gemstone. It is a very good book, to be honest. It has mostly clear explanations for dummies like me, enough maths and formulas to apply, and what is important, everything is car-related, because you know, most aero stuff you find in internet is airplanes related. It is close, but not the same. For example, airplane wings are not supposed to work after stalling point, while for race car wing it is acceptable to a certain degree. Plus, uh, there are some interesting websites on internet, like Airfoil Tools, for example, where you can find lots of information as well. I will leave links in the description. So, I started my pretty long way of digging into this really interesting thing. It took me almost a year to come to everything that I'm sharing with you now. Uh, I started with a lot of reading, researching and, of course, measuring car dimensions and angles. I will leave this boring stuff behind, however it has some pitfalls and grey areas. 
At the beginning I was doing everything just in spreadsheets, but at some point it became pretty complicated and in spreadsheets you can't do some things dynamically, so I decided to code it properly. It took me just 3-4 months of work and about 8000 lines of code, so I ended up with some piece of software I am pretty proud of. Here I have a couple of points to mention. First of all, I try to speak about general trends I found and not specific figures, because some of the ideas implemented can't be calculated precisely without CFD calculations and some rocket science. So several more complex implementations like error shadowing, stalling or trailing flaps, they are based not on calculations but on graphs I found in books and other sources. I understand that they can't be transferred directly from one wing to another, but they are good enough to understand general trends and ideas. But all base fundamental mechanics are properly calculated as should be. And second point, my program calculates only separate wings. I don't take into account aerodynamics of whole body, neither floor or diffuser. Of course they have significant impact, but these are static parts and they don't affect balance of the car. So I was not really interested in them and they are not so easy to take into account. But you are always welcome to make any comments, suggestions, etc. Tell me what you think in general or in any details. I will be glad to hear it. So here is the latest version of my program to the moment. I blurred some intermediate figures, not to confuse the whole picture. And I will be showing it part by part. So now I can compare two setups, for example let's build situation with spin I showed you before. Here in old setup I have settings from that day and uh, if in new setup I will go uh, on both wings one step down, we will see that at high speed I can lose about 5 kg of downforce and about 2.3 kg of drag, that's nice. And at the same time, time now I know that the balance of the car will change to oversteer by about 6%. We actually don't know what these percents are, but uh, it gives us some comparable fi figures at least. So if I knew this before, maybe I could at least expect some oversteer. Moreover, now I can adjust my lower wing precisely to level off this balance. So the main goal was actually reached. And after several tests I can tell that this balance prediction is pretty accurate, at least to my feeling of real car. It is really interesting that these wings can generate about 50 kg of downforce at highest settings at high speed, plus something will come from floor and body. It is a lot, but uh, maybe I expected a bit more. Theoretically we can create even more with rear wing, but unfortunately we have much less freedom with front wing, so any further increase of downforce will come at a price of excessive understeer. So I would say that from slicks we have a lot of grip as well. Slicks is an interesting topic either, but not today. Another very interesting subject in this research is stalling. After some angle of attack of the wing, flow separations happens under the wing and wing becomes less effective. And what is happening before stalling point we know pretty good. It is described well in equations, formulas, etc. So here on the right graph I simulate angle of attack against uh, coefficients of downforce and drag. And what is happening before this drop is calculated precisely. But what is happening after is pretty grey area. It is difficult to say it without wind tunnel uh, or complex CFD. But there is still a lot of information in open sources that I could combine in some idea of how wing might behave after stalling point. And now I can see where is my wing on this slope and to understand how to balance them. Because sometimes it happens that you increase angle of attack, but wing generates actually less downforce. And some results are pretty surprising. For example, let's take front wings. From theory we know that air efficiency of the wing depends on its aspect ratio, on its shape, how much it is stretched basically. More squared wing will be less effective in terms of drag to downforce ratio than longer wing. So if we increase angle of front wing and decrease angle of upper flaps, we can get more downforce and less drag at the same time. It's not much of a gain because we don't have a lot of play with lower wing. Uh, because we are pretty limited by regulations, but some little improvements are still possible when you know it and when you combine all data in one place. There are a lot of aspects left like wing camber, garden flaps, for example aero shadowing on back wing, etc. etc. that helped me a lot to understand how all this work together. 
please let me know if you like this technical content. Maybe I will do more technical stuff on the channel. In terms of car balance and handling, I definitely see positive influence of this research every time I'm behind the wheel of real race car. But speaking about pure car performance, it's not that easy. You get advantage of low air setup automatically on straights. You basically don't have to do anything, just go flat out and aero will work for you, car is just naturally faster. But in turns you will be limited by available grip. But if you change from low air setup to high air setup, you will have to brake later, you will have to bring more speed into corner to benefit from high aero. It takes skill and courage to be honest. High air setup requires more driving skill basically. So by the end I am not sure I could make the car itself much faster or my skill is good enough to benefit from it. But from my first visit to Alton Park almost two years ago until now I improved my lap times by almost four seconds. That's a lot. Of course, possibly there are many reasons for that, like track conditions, skills improvement, hopefully, uh, work on the car, etc. But I believe that understanding of aero is small but significant piece of this puzzle. But it's far from final picture, I believe. Let me know if you enjoyed this little technical journey. Press like, leave comment below, subscribe if you haven't. You know what to do. See you next time.